Hello, and welcome to Diane's Garden. Well, obviously, this isn't Diane's Garden. This is our workshop. But uh, we aren't going to be out in the garden yet. We're still counting the weeks before we're going to get out there. So today, we're going to prepare to get out in the garden by working on our tools. So I just have a couple quick tools here we're going to work on. We're going to work on a, a small garden hoe and my garden trowel so that we can... Uh, you can get an idea of even how you're going to take care of your old shovels. I do have an old shovel here that has been neglected for years and sitting in the corner of the garage. So we'll take a look at that too. So right now we're going to swing over here and we're going to go through the process of cleaning these tools because you want them nice and clean before you start sharpening. So let's go over to my wash station here and wash up some dirty tools. And this is a brush I keep in my tool bag. When I go visit my clients, I keep this along so that I can clean my tools on the go. Um, it, you are right. It's a grill brush and it works really well. So this is one of my shovels. I use the brushy side to get rid of soil on the blade. It has the nice scraper parts so I can get in and scrape off that dirt that gets caught under the lip. And then I hose it off and ready to put it in my garden bag. That's my main use for this tool. The scraper part also comes in handy when you have a tool that is and sadly neglected as this poor shovel has. This is not one that I normally use. It's been sitting in the garage for years not being um, used at all. But there's raised amounts of rust on here so I can scrape on it and get some of that off. And then use my brush and work on it. And this poor shovel needs more work than these hand tools can give it. So I'm actually gonna take it later on today to uh, the grinder and grind some of the rust off of there before I shovel it oil it and put it away for the season. So I want to re-establish re a purpose for this tool in the garden. It doesn't, some of the worst looking tools can be brought back to be some of your favorites. So don't forget about your old friends. So let's get busy. So now we're over here at the cleaning station. It's important when you're working with your tools, when you're sharpening them and and getting them put away for the winter, or, or in this case, I was neglectful and didn't do it until spring. But So when you're getting them ready, make sure that they're clean and they're dry before you start sharpening them. So here's my trowel. In this bucket here, I have just a mild soap, water, and a wire, wire brush. So I'm going to get my wire brush and just start rubbing off and you can see by the soap bubbles that it is taking off some of the rust. Get a nice firm grip, use a little elbow grease in there, rub as hard as you can, swish it around. It's starting to look better already. Give it a good swish on both sides, get the back as well. I love this trowel. This is, I call it trolley. Uh, and it is heavy duty. Uh, it's a, all the foraging is one, done with one piece of metal and I use this tool throughout the season. And apparently didn't take as good a care of it as I should have. So for argument's sake, let's say that I've got this pretty well cleaned up. So uh, I've wiped it off with my paper towel gotten most of the rust off. Now we're going to go back to the workbench and take care of the final pieces of rust on here as well as the handle. All right, here we are back over at the workbench. I'm going to put my gloves on, protect my hands a little bit here. Uh, gloves that fit and are comfortable. I have a piece of steel wool I'm just going to go over the blade several times 
and try to get off a little bit more of the fine rust that's on here. I don't plan to get it all off. I mean, it's, I don't want to be out here all day. So, but I'm going to rub it down. This also acts as like a sandpaper. It makes it a little smoother. And just give it a few more rubs on here. But you can even see where it's starting to get down to the metal, uh, the bright, shiny metal a little better. Give it a good scrub over. Wipe it down. And you can see that looks better already. And you can see a lot more of the forged metal. There. That blade is ready for a little bit of an edge on here. But before we do that, let's address this handle. It's a small handle, so we don't have a lot to work with here today. But it still gets rough and weathered out in the garden. So I'm going to use a coarser grade of sandpaper. This is an 80. And I'm going to take off some of these rough where the where the rings have raised on here. Piled down nice and smooth. Feels good. Now this is a, a finer grade sandpaper. I just go over it to take off any little bits and it makes it a little smoother. I don't need a lot. I guess it feels pretty good, really. Get these out of my way. You can tell at one time I had the handle painted blue so I could identify where my tools were. Uh, th this is linseed oil and this is what I'm going to use on the handles of all my tools this spring as I get them ready. I have a garden hoe here that we're going to work on shortly and I will also be uh, addressing the handle on here as well as my stainless steel shovels which I don't really need to sharpen today. I'm just going to clean them up and, and work on the handles. Stainless steel is really nice. It's a, a definitely an investment that you're going to make in your garden tools, uh, but really worth it. Well, well worth it. It's They last forever. They don't rust. They keep a nice edge on them. So I would say if you are serious about a good garden shovel, look for something with a stainless steel blade. So this is linseed oil, and one thing I want to point out to you about linseed oil is that it is flammable when on a cloth, and I will attach a link about it. So after you're done using your linseed oil cloths, you must dispose of them properly. So I'm just right now going to rub this in here. There's something about heat combustion and... You know all of that sciencey stuff. I don't get it, but you know it's good to know because they, you don't want to keep them in your garage stall because they could suddenly combust and start your garage on fire. It's happened, not to me, but I've heard of instances. So I've got that rubbed in, and it's, it looks like it's absorbed quite a bit of it. It was very dry, so I'm just going to add a little bit more, rub it in. And it's about all she needs. Now I'm going to let her rest. But I will dispose, after I've done all the handles on my tools, I am going to dispose of this. Uh, I'm going to put it out in my fire pit and start it on, and just torch it so that I don't have to worry about it starting on fire by itself. Yeah, I will take care of that for it, and I don't have to worry about destroying the garage. So now this handle is ready. All I have left to do is put a little bit of an edge on this blade and then protect the blade on here with some oil. But to demonstrate that, we are going to go right over to the vise where I have a garden hoe already to work on and we will sharpen this blade. So let's move on over to the garden hoe. Here we are over in the station. Uh, I have a vise and I put a glove in the vise just so I wouldn't mar the handle anymore or this is clamped onto the metal piece here and I didn't want to make any any marks on it. Well, I don't know why. But anyways, 
This is a very old hole. I've had this uh, years and years, and I can't tell you when I first got this, but it, I, it has served me well, and I use it quite a bit. Uh, I like that it has a smaller head, and I can get in underneath plants and just kind of cultivate the soil a little bit. But this one does, it benefits from having a little bit of an edge to it. I have started on this one earlier. I'm going to use a file. You can get these at any hardware store, Home Depot, wherever you want to shop. Uh, it, it's just ask for a file that's suitable for sharpening metal tools. So they will help you at the, at the hardware store. So anytime you're going to be sharpening, you're going to start with at a 45 degree angle and push in one direction. Don't go back and forth. One direction. Pick up, start there again, come down. You see I have my, I'm trying to give this a little more strength here as I'm, I'm putting some pressure on this tool to get a nice edge. And this doesn't need to be razor blade sharp. Uh, we're cultivating soil with this and the force that one uses when applying it to the ground is many times enough to penetrate the upper layer of soil. If you need to um, a razor edge on here, you're using the wrong tool. So I'm just gonna come on this side and, and don't forget the tip. A little tip on there, I'm just put my hand under there for support. And that's another reason I wear gloves. It's easier on my hands. I don't run the risk of scraping the skin off of my finger if I should happen to slip. So I have been at this for, I would say, five minutes besides what I've done here on the video. And I am very happy with the um, edge that I put on here. It is not sharp enough to cut a piece of paper, but by looking at it, I can see that it has a nice fresh edge enough to break through the top layer of soil, even if it was a little bit harder. You're, on a tool like this, including a shovel, you only need to do one side. You do the top edge of the tool. You don't do both sides. You, like I said, you don't want a razor edge. You just want a nice, clean cutting surface. So I have a nice 45 degree angle on here that I can see by the new metal, fresh metal, silver color, that I've gotten all the way around. I don't need to go up into this area. That's not the part that does the work. That's the part that gives it support. So I feel quite happy with the edge that I have on here now. I'm just gonna rub it a little bit in case there's any burrs on here, little foreign, little bent pieces of metal that may have come during the course of filing, so I'm just gonna rub that. We'll take any of those off just because I don't want them. Give it an extra clean over. And then this, believe it or not, is vegetable oil. And this is what I use on my blades. I do not use motor oil uh, as they did in years gone by. Uh, I don't want that in my soil. So I just put a little vegetable oil on there. No matter if it's a, and rub it in. Get the, both sides. And this will help prevent the rust from coming back. And Colin's gonna keep track of me this summer and make sure that I do a better job of putting my tools away as soon as I get done using them so they don't get caught in the rain like they have in the past. So I hope this short demonstration gave you some idea on how to care for your tools. Uh, keep them clean, keep them sharp, take care of them, they'll last you forever. Again, just like nice flower pots, your tools are an investment. So find something that works really well for you that you're comfortable with and um, make sure it's nice and sharp. Oh, one last thing I want to show you about handles on tools. Let's go over here for a second. Okay, so like I said, this tool is very seasoned, let's call it, mature. We don't want to use the O word. Uh, sometimes your handles get very rough um, and 
your hands get a little more sensitive or tender. This is hockey stick tape. So I don't go all the way down to the bottom. I only go to the area where my hands are going to be. Don't you love that green color? It's like one of my faves. Surprise. Oh, keep it tight as you're rolling it up. Overlapping slightly. That work nice for if you spin it, huh? If you don't think one uh, layer of tape is enough, then go ahead and put two on. I just usually do one. And I bring it up, like I said, only to where my hands grip. I don't, I don't feel it's necessary to do the whole handle. If you go to a hockey store, they have them in every color imaginable. And at first I thought about getting the yellow one because it would make it much easier to find my tools in the garden. Then decided the green was much prettier. But also let me mention before you put this tape on, do not oil the wood. If you're gonna put hockey tape around your handles, you don't need to put linseed oil on your handles because the tape just won't stick as well. So you want to avoid that. If you want to, now like I said, I'm going to, I'm not going to do the entire handle. I have my knife. And put it down there. And then take my linseed and just do the upper portion. Now if you, um, how do you know if you have enough linseed oil on there? Um, I guess it's, it's something that's like kind of trial and error. Make sure that that doesn't just pop open, which is good. It's more trial and error and it's more of an appearance thing. As I rub the first few times around the handle, you'll notice that it's kind of soaks in. I let it sit for a couple seconds and you can s almost watch it absorb the oil. Any oil that was heavy on the top is now absorbed into the tool. And you can do this a couple times a year. You don't have to do it just once a year. And I have this part of the tool. Clean up my messy can. There we have it. Wonderful. Now this little baby is ready to rock and roll. We've got big plans this summer. Here we go. Nice green handle. Edge on the blade. It's ready for the garden. So I hope this was good and you um, got some useful information out of it. Thanks for joining me in the workshop today, and hopefully soon I will see you in the garden. Goodbye. Linseed oil. Don't leave it in your house. Very flammable. Where's the marshmallows? <laughs> Snow again. It's getting real old. <laughs> Alrighty. There she goes. We're safe and sound.